So hello everyone, this is the first part of our series in Lenten Reflections. And uh, I want to begin, first of all, with a little friend of mine that I've had for almost 50 years. And that is this small little statue uh, of a young man and I saw in its simplicity. And I bought it to take home with me for the rest of my life, hopefully, to uh, remind me that life is to be simple that we need to be who we are, to be as we are created, and over time to not uh, cloud or distort the simplicity of who we are. So I want to begin these reflections, first of all, by saying that, as you remember, on Ash Wednesday, we read the Gospel of Matthew, where we were told to, um, to fast and to pray and to give alms. So those three elements will be pretty much a part of the first three talks that I'm giving. Uh, so I want to begin, first of all, though, before I get to those three elements, this first talk will deal with fasting. But I want to speak about self-knowledge. When we're trying to understand the journey of life, the journey of a faith life, we have to understand ourselves. That kind of talk might seem to you very psychological, but in reality, that kind of talk about self-knowledge, self-awareness, began in the 14th century with St. Catherine of Siena and several others who began to understand that if we are to understand who God is and who we are, then we have to become aware of that relationship, but also the relationship to myself of who I am. Self-knowledge is an awareness First of all, that I am a created person, created in God's image and likeness. And so with that relationship of self with God, if I eliminate God in my life, I only have myself. So there's a distortion of who I am because it's missing a component. I'm missing a component. When Jesus went into the desert and fasted 40 days, he was tempted as we are tempted every day. But in the end, the temptations were overcome by Jesus himself. And in that, he recognized better who he was and also what he was about. That he came from God, he is God, and that he was to bring God's love to each one of us. Lent and life really are times when we look at the temptations of our life and those temptations that in many ways distort who we are and the simplicity, but the beauty of who we are created to be. The more that I can understand myself and acknowledge myself as one in the image of God the more my talents, my abilities come to fruition. Sin disables a person's uh, personality in life and sin distorts the human person. So why do we fast? With all of that in mind, we look at fasting as a way of moving away from what distorts my life, what harms my life. So as this first week begins, let's look at those things that we can fast from. As I've said, a candy bar might help our diabetes or it might help our weight control, but it will not give us salvation. In fact, I think sometimes just picking one thing and uh, fasting from that, we almost become proud because in the end we say, I did it. Fasting has another meaning. It means looking at those temptations that I have in life and to be aware of them, again, self-knowledge, and finding ways to eliminate those. As I was preparing this talk today, I just even this morning early, I, uh, someone said something to me which was a repetition of something else that someone else used to say to me. And whenever it was said, I always kind of made a joke about what that person said and in some ways about that person. And I caught myself this morning and I said, don't criticize, don't judge. That's fasting. Fast from those things that 
uh, put something into my life that is um, alien really to God because God doesn't judge, God doesn't criticize. And so if we examine ourselves this week, this first week of trying to find our true self in God and to find God in us, the fasting needs to be broader than just a, um, a food element or a beverage or some other little uh, habit that we want to move away from. But let's look deeper. What are the sins that we find in ourselves? We can envy other people for what they have and catch ourselves every time that sense of envy comes up. So another part of fasting might be that I recognize in myself that I am angry. I'm not talking about getting mad. We all get mad. But sometimes when we don't reach beyond that, that being mad in a single instance over a single thing or a single person can grow into an anger. How can I fast from that? So maybe when something happens and I get mad, catch, catch yourself, catch myself, and find another way to, um, to redirect those little disturbances in life and get beyond being mad and even letting it grow into anger. Or maybe there's pride in our life. Pride can be very uh, rampant in our life where we find a way to um, uh, kind of pat ourselves on the back too much. We brag about what we've done, uh, and, but it becomes really a, a part of my life. In fact, we can find, our, when we find people like that, or even ourselves, that people don't want to be around us. Let's catch ourselves. I think, you know, fasting is really catching ourselves in these uh, sins that can be very prevalent uh, in our life. Uh, maybe we lie. Maybe we gossip. Maybe we tell stories about others to put others down to make ourselves look better. All of those things that kind of take hold of our life. Lent is a time, 40 days, to be aware. To go back to the original version that God has created us to be. In a sense, with my little statue here, to be that simple person that God has created. To have an awareness that this is who God wants, and actually this is who I want to be. I know in, in my life and ministry over the years, it's not every day, but some days when there's really, I catch myself in kind of a mood because of things that have happened or I'm angry over something, I look at this little statue and it reminds me, go back to who you are. Go back to the original version that God has created you to be. And that can be if I understand that God is right there as well. The last thing that I want to bring to our attention in fasting is that many times we're the ones who create ourselves. Through all of these attractions, these temptations that come into our life, we distort who we are. And so I encourage you this week under this title of fasting and coming to a rediscovery of myself, the beauty of myself, to look at who we are, to look at who you are, but look at who you are in reference to God. Don't put God on the sidelines. And when we do that, we'll recognize these other temptations that creep into our life and distort us. This might be the heavy side of our talks this week, but let's do that as a practice uh, for the good of ourselves and the, uh, the good of our relationship with each other and with God. So God bless you this week first week of Lent.